Legend says that a brand new dimension opens whenever you're working with 32-bit in Photoshop and the legends are not wrong. Have a look at this photo. So here we have a picture of two dancers. Look closely at the layer above. We have a layer called light. Let me turn it off and on for you. Just a bulb kind of thing, just a blob of white right in there at the top. Now this image is 8-bit. If you have a look right here, RGB 8. When you blur the 8-bit, watch what happens. So if we go to filter, let's go to blur gallery and inside of that, let's choose something fancy, path blur. And we're gonna add a little blur in this direction, maybe a little bit in this direction, maybe a little bit in this direction, okay? So three directions just coming out of the radius, pretty nice. Increase the speed. It is nothing new, it's just what we expected. And if you check on the field blur, you can blur it even more. So I'm gonna open up the field blur and add even more blur, something like that. And hit OK. This is normal. But when you're working with 32-bit, watch what happens. So here is the document copy and this is in 32-bit. Now, we have the same light. However, if we go to filter, blur gallery and let's choose path blur again. And this time if we try to blur it, have a look what happens. Look at the difference. If we increase the speed, you will see the difference even more. Let's go to field blur. Increase the blur all the way. Look at that. And hit OK again. See what's happening in there? Also on top of that, if you decrease the opacity, the actual intensity decreases. Have a look what happens. As I decrease the opacity, see how the intensity decreases. In this case, if we decrease the opacity, it just becomes lighter. But in this case, have a look. It's a whole different story. And on top of that, you can just try different effects, which we will get into later. But look at the difference. Why is this happening? Today, I'm gonna to share with you three secret advantages of working with 32-bit in Photoshop. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are back in the absolute brilliant world of Photoshop in 32-bit. And let us understand what is happening. And the first advantage here is intensity. So if you go to the color picker when you're working with 8-bit or 16-bit, it looks like this. We have always witnessed this. This is simple color picker. It has the color, it has the RGP values, and that's pretty much it, all right? CMYK values and all of that stuff. But if you're working in 32-bit, when you go ahead and go to image mode and change it to 32-bit, see what happens. Look at the color picker closely. It has one extra slider right there, and that is intensity. And we actually did not pick white while we were painting here. Let me do that again for you. So I created a brand new layer and from the color picker chose a bright orangish color, something like this. And then simply increased the intensity. Now have a closer look. As we increase the intensity, the RGB values stay the same. What does that tell us? That these RGB values are still in there, even if it looks white. It is in there. It's the intensity that increases. So let's increase the intensity to about 3.4 stops and hit OK. Then we will take a brush, a hard round brush, and just make a dab right in there. You can do whatever you like, whatever shape you want. Now once you do this, let us go ahead and blur it like we did before. Go to Filter, Blur Gallery, and then path blur and add a very nice effect maybe in this direction maybe in a couple more directions just like so all directions getting away from the radius just like this and let's add it looks beautiful you can on top of that you can also add field blur or just add field blur it would pretty much do the same thing it looks interesting let's come back to path blur and i want to delete these right there i don't want them a little bit more concentrated towards the center. Beautiful. Hit OK. You see the orange coming out from white to orange? Now let's edit the shape. So press Ctrl or Command T and we're gonna stretch it 
something like this and move it a little up. This looks beautiful. Look at the light. And now let's decrease the opacity. Let's decrease the intensity of the whole thing. This is a beautiful light. Look at that. Now we want to use blend if on top of it. Double click on the right hand side of the layer. We don't want the light to hit the shadow areas of the image. So let's take it away from the dark areas by taking the slide off the underlying layer from left to right. Something like this. Hold the Alt key or the Option key. Click on it to break it apart and do something like this. This looks interesting as well. Hit OK and maybe you can increase the opacity a little more. OK. Now to add some flare, we can make a copy of this. Let's keep the opacity at 50%. Press Ctrl or Command J. See, it's looking even more wonderful. And this time, we will take away the blend if that we added. You can actually right click on it and simply choose clear layer style. There you have it. And decrease the opacity and keep it at something like maybe 11%. Have a look. Such a nice effect. And if you go back to this, you blur it here. It just stays blank, dull, white. Look at that. So to wrap up. Secret advantage number one is intensity. When you're working with 32-bit, you have that extra intensity slider. And when you change the intensity, the RGB values stay the same. However, it's still there. It's just the intensity that increases. And also, when we play with the opacity, the intensity of the light, the intensity of the color interacts with the other layers. Take a look. Even if now, we make a copy of layer one. Look how it interacts with the wall and creates that bright light at the back. It looks amazing, doesn't it? So we can also keep it this way. It's creating such a nice effect. Let us move on to secret advantage number two, and that is extreme color manipulation. You see, when you're working with 32 bits, you know no limits. Even 16 bit has limits, but 32 bit, that's a monster. So. Let's take a look at this photo. This is actually 8-bit at the moment, right? If we go ahead and add a levels adjustment layer by clicking on the adjustment layer icon and then choose levels. If I take away all the details, see what happens. So this slider on the right makes bright things brighter. So let's take it to the left. At this point, we are absolutely losing details in the sky. Let's go even further. Very much further. Look, there are no details. Let's go even further. So at three, just some things, some artifacts here and there. Now, let's create one more levels adjustment layer by clicking on the adjustment layer icon and then choose levels. No matter how much you try, you will never get those details back. Let me try to darken this. Nope, not getting any details back. Now let's try and see if we can get any details with 16-bit by going to image mode and then let's change it to 16-bit. No details, even when you're working with 16 bits and you have lost the details, you try to darken it, the details won't be back. But with 32 bit, see what happens. Let's go to image, mode, and 32 bit. I don't want to flatten anything, so don't flatten. Have a look. The details are back. And you can get even more details back by taking the slider, even further. Look at that, my friend. It is absolute bonkers. Look at this. It's just, it, there, I don't know how to say, it. there is no limits as to what, what you can do with it. It's absolutely amazing. So there you go. Secret advantage number two. Even if you have lost the details, there's almost no limit as to what you can recover. And that is the advantage. Extreme color manipulation. Now let's move on to secret advantage number three and a lot of you guys know about this so that's not practically a secret but there you go HDR. See when you're working with HDR in 32 bit it's unbeatable. You see what I did there? Let's move on. So let's create an HDR image. Let's go to file automate and inside of that merge to HDR Pro. We will browse the files and these three exposures are the one we want to consider. Hit OK and attempt to automatically align source images because I took those photos handheld and there might be some movement. Hit OK. So first we will create a neutral 16-bit version of this. So let's make sure that the mode is 16-bit and we don't want any edge glow, so radius and strength. 
uh, all the way to the left hand side no details no extra details no extra saturation all at zero at neutral hit ok or hit enter and there you have it the 16-bit hdr version now let's go ahead and create the 32-bit let's go to file again automate and merge to hdr pro browse and choose out of these three images hit ok in the merge to hdr pro dialog box let's change this this time to 32-bit now i don't want to complete toning in camera raw so i'm going to keep it unchecked this is all right maybe we will take the slider a little bit to the right to get most of the details and then hit enter or hit ok so there you go this is the 32-bit version of the same now here if you have a look it does look like that we are losing the details and it's blowing out but that's not the case similarly have a look at the 16-bit version we will try to recover as much as we can in this area and let's see which one does better so this is 32-bit if we go ahead and create a levels adjustment layer and take the slider at the bottom right to the left look at the details that you recover here it's amazing look at that and on top of that you can just add some more contrast right in there and make it even darker look at the details all right similarly if you look at this one if we create a levels adjustment layer it won't be as good if we just take the bottom right slider to the left it just becomes how shall i say it blacker right it doesn't darken it you have to take the slider in the middle to the right and it's not as good as this one look at how natural this one looks let's reset both of these now let us look at how much details can we recover in shadows so this is the 16 bit and in the levels adjustment layer if we just make the bright brighter look at how much details we can recover so right now we are at a point at 39 right similarly in here if we go to the same area and we go to 39 look what happens there's way more de we can go even further and there are details still in there at this point we are absolutely losing it but look at 32 bit it's just a completely different story so there you go extreme details in hdr when you're working with 32 bits so that my friend wraps up the three secret advantages of working in 32 bit now some of you might have a question and that question probably is do i really need to work in 32 bit is it practical well if you ask me i would say no not really unless you're doing something very specific something exactly that you're looking for only then use 32-bit otherwise in most cases 32-bit is useless plus it creates four to five times sometimes even more higher file size you don't need that and a lot of things do not work in 32-bit so when you're in 32-bit you cannot work in curves so this is actually 16-bit right let's have a look at 32-bit if you try to click on the adjustment layer icon there is no vibrance there is no curves there is no brightness contrast there are a lot of filters that you cannot apply liquify even if you select the image let's see if we can apply liquify no we cannot so it has a lot of limitations only if you're looking to achieve a specific thing 32 bit might be something that you might want to consider but otherwise in most cases 8 bit or 16 bit is more than enough if you want a comparison between 8-bit and 16-bit, you can watch this video on what I recommend to work with. So there you go. I hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks, or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thanks so much for all your support. Thank you for watching. I will see you guys again in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.